Hi everybody, hope you're all well. Uh, thank you for joining me today. Give us a little wave if you can hear me because I just want to check. Oh, brilliant, thank you everyone. So uh, thank you for joining me today. Um, it's wonderful to have you. And of course as well, this show launched, I think it was the start of April, around about the 7th or 8th of April. Um, and I'm really sorry, um, Andrew's telling me to tell you, and I'm gonna tell you anyway. Um, I went to Turkey to visit Cadence, which was incredible, which some of you may know as I've been talking about it on some of the shows recently, but um, it was fabulous. But thank you everyone for bearing with us whilst we managed to reschedule this for this week. Um, it has been an amazing week. It's been incredible. I've learned so much. Um, and also at the same time, there's so much to share as well. So it has just been phenomenal. But thank you everyone for joining. Um, it is a really miserable day today. It looked like it was gonna be nice. And then on the way in today, got here and then all of a sudden outside, I've never seen rain like it. So even more enthused to just stay inside and do some crafting today. So I'd love it as well if you were joining me with your crafting. But at the same time, what I want to do during this show, um, well, during the Zoom really, this workshop, is cover some of the techniques that I did during the shows because it, it just went so fast. It went so, so fast. And there were some small techniques that I'd never done before on rice paper um, that we kind of covered really vaguely and really quickly. And being able to go into that into more depth on this on this workshop will actually um, allow me to pass on some more of that knowledge to you and be able to teach you a little bit more about the techniques and, and the best way to achieve the results um, whilst doing those. Um, so of course, this is the Charming at Chinoiserie USB, um, and it was one of my favourite ones I think we've even done so far. A lot of the designs in there um, were a, a strong nod to some William Morris pattern. Um, we had some ideas in there that really were mid-century, um, and we had something that was, you know, a little bit more authentic and something that moved through different genres of art that I, I found that we all had a relation to. And also it was a theme that I'd never touched on before and never shared with you. So um, it, it was brilliant. I absolutely loved it. And the samples were just incredible. So um, what I'd like to do is I wanted to share with you um, a technique that I started off with during the show. And I think I literally covered this for about two or three minutes. Um, and it was creating your very own embossed um, finishes um, on rice paper. So working with the foiling technique, with the melting highlights, you can see there on the rice paper itself, it looks exquisite. And again, this is a permanent finish. So when you're actually creating this technique, you can see in this area, I've just enhanced elements of the petals of that flower. And of course this could be any design at all, but it meant that you can still treat it as you would do any other rice paper, whether you're putting it onto fabric, onto glass. Um, of course, this particular um, USB lent itself to the chinoiserie crockery, um, wall art, and those sort of ceramic finishes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm also gonna tie in a little bit of the before we start of this project, because I've got my printer with me, and this is something I've not done before, but it's something I've always wanted to do. And it's it's never worked in the, in the television studios because there's just a lot going on. But I want to show you printing the rice paper from our USB, because I've got my computer here, uh, printing the rice paper and then actually applying it to the surface. So it's really from the foundations to the end result, which I think is really important to share as well, because um, there's, we get loads of questions, which I absolutely love but it's great to cover it in one area. Um, and then of course, there's, you can go back and watch it whenever you want to for those tips and techniques. So I'm gonna go straight into Minecraft Studio first, straight into the software, just to quickly show you um, the file I'm gonna to choose to work with. And I'm not gonna focus heavily on Minecraft Studio during this workshop, purely on the basis that it's nice to get into more of the techniques um, that we can do with the rice paper once printed. But the file I'm gonna use, as you can see, we've got all the beautiful artwork in here. I think it was around about 45 um, that I was going to use. Yes, it is, number 45 here. So this is the one that I wanted to use. It's the one you've just seen me playing with. Um, and of course, if I only wanted to print one, one particular area of it, we could still um, choose just to utilize one. So using my lasso knife, I could just crop into this. Um, and this is one of the deck part sheets, or should I say icon sheets really, um, Sorry, let me do that again. I clicked with my right mouse. This is one of the icon sheets on the USB, um, which means you've got multiples um, a variety of the same icon in different shapes, sizes, and colors, um, giving you more scope with your project. So you can see here, I'm gonna select just to keep that one particular file, which then means I can play with that one and make it as big as we want it to be. So with this one, I'm looking at this and noticing these beautiful gold accents we've got here, the deep reds, the rich tones. Um, so I'm gonna make this one slightly larger. Um, the main reason being it'll be much easier for you to see it once it's printed. Um, but then again, we can actually uh, look at the true detail. 
So I've blown that up so it's pretty much full A4 in, in width and height, and I think that'll be adequate for what we're going to do. Now, before I select press print, I'm just gonna take you back to my desk here. Um, and what I've got, I'm gonna put a little weight on top of my rice paper because it'll all flutter away if not when I'm working around things. Um, I've got some of our Craftmaster printable rice paper here. I popped it in one of my Craftmaster wallets. Uh, whenever I receive it, I always take it out of the cellophane packet and put it in, in one of these straight away because it keeps it really nice and flush and folded and streamlined, uh, meaning I get no creases or crumples in it. So, and I always store it flat as well. Never store it upright because it can start to snag um, and slip inside um, a wallet. So you always want to lay it flat in a drawer. So with our rice paper, I'm gonna take some um, copier paper out of my printer here. And um, this is, I think around about 80 GSM. You can use any weight. It really doesn't make a difference unless your printer prefers a certain weight of card. I think this one, it, it goes up to about 350 GSM in cardstock. Um, some of them will take more, some of them won't. But basically, eight GSM, and then I'm gonna use our Cadence Stencil Spray. Now for this one, the Cadence Stencil Spray um, is perfect for this particular technique. Not only are we gonna be using it throughout our crafting journey with stencils, uh, going onto different surfaces like glass and fabric, but this is gonna work well adhering the copy paper to the rice paper. So what I'm gonna do first is this with this piece of paper here, I'm going to just take my lid off and give it a little shake. You can hear the ball bearing inside it. So it's crucial to give it a shake first. That's what gets the disperse going. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna pick this up. So I'm picking up the paper and I'm gonna spray it away from me. Um, if you were doing this in the garden, perfect, because you're outside. Um, I'm in an open space here, we're ventilated so we're fine, but I'm only doing a small mist anyway. So really small amount onto that copy of paper, okay? Now I'm gonna put this back down onto my mat and then I'm gonna take the piece of rice paper here, okay? And line that up perfectly with the copy of paper. It doesn't matter if you're slightly off because you do have that um, sort of wiggle room in a printer of either side where the margins can uh, centralize the paper for you. So don't worry about that. And of course, all of the rice paper is cut accurately to a four size. Now I'm just smoothing down the surface of this to push the two together. I'm not, you know, burnishing it down. That's not essential at all. Um, all we're doing now, as you can see, the two of those have stuck together. Now what I always do is I'll always print just one of these at a time. Um, if you were to do loads of carrier sheets like this, there's just no, um, I always find that there's just no point. Um, and your printer always prefers to do one at a time and then you can always check it first before it starts bringing the rest through. What I do always tend to do is put a little few, a few more sheets of copy paper in the back of the printer so it's got a cushion behind it. So it will feed from the initial sheet on the surface and there's still some behind it because sometimes printers don't like it if there's only one piece of paper in there. It'll think there's nothing there. Um, and they're all different, but that's just technology. So I'm gonna pop this now all together inside the loading station of our printer. And you can see I'm just using a standard inkjet printer for this process. You don't need an all singing and dancing um, laser printer. If you've got one, perfect. You can still do the same process. It works exactly the same, even if it's a tray that you feed your paper into. Um, so I'm gonna go back to the graphics program here and I'm gonna print directly from Minecraft Studio. Um, I've not saved this. I've not located it anywhere else within my computer. Um, I'm gonna go straight to print here. Now my printer has popped up straight away here, which is the DeskJet 4100 series. Um, we have other printers in our office, so it's picked up a few of those, but it's located this one here because I have it plucked in with the green tick. Now I'm not gonna alter any of my preferences. I'm quite happy with how it is. So I'm going to select print, the printer will wake up, and then it'll start to do its thing. So it takes around about 20, 30 seconds for it to print through here, but I'm always gonna watch it, and it's just started to feed it through, and the printer is now feeding that rice paper out. So you'll start to see here, of course, where it's coming out, it prints at the exact same pace as it would do anything else. It doesn't treat the substrate any differently. That's why we give it that special carrier sheet here. So of course the printer will then still treat it as normal paper. Now, the reason why I've actually stuck that to this cartridge paper on the reverse here is that whilst this is feeding through, of course you load the paper in the back of the printer to the side. So with the printer being upright, that paper's here, and of course it's going on a journey like this through the printer. And we have had a fabulous question, thank you very much, which is the right side to print on. Um, and there is no side. 
both sides are the exact same. Um, with Sumi paper, some sides have a shiny side and some is more of a rough side. With this one, both sides are identical. So you can print on both sides. So absolutely no issue um, about getting which one um, is correct. But fabulous question, thank you for that. So also, um, when we were talking about the printer feeding the paper through, of course, there is rollers that take it through. So if this wasn't attached to this carry sheet, it has the potential to wrap and curl around those rollers because it is a thin substrate. Now what I'm gonna do with this is then peel it away. There we go, so take it away from the sheet. Now automatically the paper wants to curl up like this because we've actually then almost burnished it, pulling it off there. So if I then face it back down, onto my desk here. So I'm holding it up against me and I'm just going to fold it the second way. There we go, like that, just to straighten it out, just like that. And that there is the paper ready to go. And it's dried um, straight away. I usually do leave it about 30 seconds, but what you can do now is take a heat gun just over the surface. There we go. Just like that, that there is our inkjet printer now set. Now, um, I have had some questions about my ink bleeding on my surface. It all depends on the ink that you're using, but at the same time, um, your inkjet printer ink is probably water-based. Um, and of course, if you're gonna saturate the paper, naturally any paper of any form will bleed, even wallpaper. So when you're buying a wallpaper that's designed to have wet adhesive on it, if it's, if it's wet for too long or if the glue is on the wrong side, the ink can bleed. So you always want to ensure that you're, what you're doing or applying with this is that you're not oversaturating it. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. So with the next process of this one, I'm wanting to decorate these flowers um, with that beautiful embossing technique and then actually decorate the vase with this. So before I take it away from the paper, I'm gonna show you something that I found um, extremely interesting and something that I've fallen in love with doing with my rice paper. Now I'm gonna use this product here. Now this is the Cadence um, napkin glue. We have this on the Highlight Crafts website. If you've not got any already, you're gonna absolutely love it. For one, it's going to bond your rice papers to the flat slick surfaces like glass and ceramic, terracotta, plastic and metal. Those hard surfaces that are really hard to capture. With this one, you can use it also as an embossing adhesive. So I'm gonna decant some of it out here into this little glass dish. We only need a really small amount. I think I've got probably around about um, just under a 10 pence piece size there. So I'm gonna use a really small decorative painting brush here. Um, I, the smaller the brush I find better um, for the finer areas. And I'm gonna dip the napkin glue straight into here, okay? And what I'm going to do with this is I'm gonna start with just this central part, just to show you. And I'm gonna go straight over that printed surface. There we go. And you don't have to be super delicate, super careful. It's not like you are painting, but theoretically you are, but you're not having to be cautious whilst doing it. So you're not mixing any colors um, or anything like that. And then I'm gonna bring it in a piece of cardstock underneath it. And then I'm going to take, let's have a look, one of my embossing powders. This one here is the polished gold. Now I'm gonna use this one because it's gonna work beautifully with the color of the images. Now this is our Craftmaster Melting Highlights. I'm gonna tip that out onto the surface. And because we heat set our rice paper with our heat gun, um, I'm confident in knowing that my emboss powder is not gonna to stick to all of the ink. Um, so I'm just gonna tap this off here. And you can see it has then added a darker haze around there. Now what I'm gonna do before I heat any of this, is I'm gonna fill in some of the remaining areas and then I'm gonna keep going through with the process as we go along the project. Now, if you've got larger surface area to cover, um, you can of course use a sponge to apply this um, glue. You can use a much larger brush. Or if you wanted, for example, to emboss a whole piece of paper, you can use your stencil spray. Now what that will do is give you a temporary adhesion um, which will allow you to adhere embossing powder too. So again, a little bit of the embossing powder and it almost, I'm literally using the whole pot, but it's all gonna go back inside there. We hardly use any when we're doing it. Um, Cause you can see there, all of that has come back off. So what I'm gonna do is just do a smaller area in here. Here we go. Working into all of that detail. And again, you can see there's some areas, um, I've not gone right up to the edge with it. And because of the style of the image um, and the way I'm actually moving the brush, it really doesn't matter at all. And a lot of people, when they, when they, as soon as you pick up a paintbrush in your hand, um, for a lot of people, and I can understand why, 
it's an instant like daunting feeling because it's like, oh, I'm gonna have to do a masterpiece or a professional painting. This takes all of that out of it because you can use a paintbrush freehand technically. Um, you can see there I've missed a spot in the middle. So that little spot there that's slightly more red, I'm just gonna go back in with my brush around there into that area, grab some more of that powder and go over the top. Now, we worked with um, Wow. Of course, Wow as a brand is very well known. Um, and I work, we worked with Brow, um, Brow? We worked with Brow. <laughs> we worked with Wow to formulate um, this embossing powder. Now, it's an ultra fine one. Um, it's almost like dust, which I absolutely love because all of those super intricate, hard to get areas of your design work, you can add adhesive to and it will grab. So even if you wanted to go in all of the line work of this image, all of that gold line work, you could emboss the finest areas of it, even almost like hair strokes, um, because it is ultra fine and it will grab to the areas. Now we do have it in multiple arrays of colors as well. We've got silver, rose gold, we've got copper metallic, and of course the polished gold that I'm using today. Um, so there's loads of different ones that you can use. And we will introduce more colors as we go through the journey with these embossing powders um, because they are absolutely fabulous. Now, just covering all of that area here. There we go. Working around. And again, I go straight to the embossing powder. Now, what you could do is you could glue a few areas and do it at once. But I'm working in stages and in steps to build up this process. Again, I'm just going to do, I think, two more bits. I'll do a little bit up here. Here we go. And also one of the factors of this embossing powder being ultra fine is that it has a much lower melting point. Now some you have to have a concentrated heat on for you know 20 to 30 seconds. This one once your heat gun has got to temperature um, will melt if not instantly. Um, it will be probably up to 10 seconds, it's fabulous. So chucking this one on here again, taking that off, capturing it on that piece of card. And then I'm going to do this larger section here because I think that would look fabulous. I've got some more in my pot ready to go. So I've used practically none. It's literally absolutely hardly, oh, the little face in there, um, hardly anything of this glue. So I'm picking up from the surface and I'm working onto the front of the print, of course, uh, with this one. And we're going to heat directly on top of the print. So around all of this area. And again, when I'm working with a brush, I tend to almost vibrate my hand sometimes, which is interesting, but what that does is it takes the, the pressure of precision away. So you can see there with the brush, as I'm holding it, sometimes I'll literally go like that. And then the brush, br bristles of the brush just wiggle into areas um, so I don't have to be ultra focused on making sure I'm staying within the lines because I find nothing more frustrating than having to follow um, follow the lines. I like to make my own direction with it and I think a lot of us do as well. So what I'm going to do with this bit, I'm just going to chuck a little bit more of that powder on there. There we go. Fabulous. Now I'm just going to set this to one side for a moment. Um, the napkin glue itself dries naturally at room temperature within about 10 to 15 minutes, especially when you're only adding a very small portion like what I've just done. I'm just going to pop that back inside the pot before I have um, a sandstorm because I know what I would do is put my heat gun on and it'd be like Phew. Um, But no, we're gonna put it to one side. So basically, with our rice paper here now, I'm happy with how that's turned out. My brush itself, um, with that little bit of napkin glow on there, it would set quite quickly. So I'm gonna rest this in some water and we can continue to use that later on. Now I'm gonna bring the heat gun to the surface and there's a few key points when you're actually at, uh, applying the heat to the rice paper, especially with embossing and powder being on there. I'm working on a glass mat and what this glass is obviously quite cool to the touch. It's room temperature in here, but it will absorb heat instantly, which is a great advantage of the glass mat. But for this process, we want to keep as much heat as possible concentrated onto our rice paper. So I'm going to hold it at a short distance from the surface of the glass. So switching this on, bring it to temperature and over the top of the rice paper here, I'm going to go straight over it and you can start to see instantly it will melt. So I'm buffing powder on the top of here and all of a sudden now, just like that, you can see straight away is automatically, there we go. So you can see it's transforming just like that. Concentrate the heat onto the surface and then follow it round and you can see that it literally takes seconds. 
all of that just instantly dazzles in the heat. So you can see there again, straight away. I'm gonna go to this bottom area down here. There we go. And look at that. So it's taken me literally a fraction of time. There we go, just to finish that little section off. I'm gonna go around any areas just to double check. And then I'm just gonna make sure I've captured all of that. There's a few little bits here. And then just on this side. Perfect. Now that there, look at that. That is absolutely gorgeous. And that there is on rice paper. It takes my breath away when I can actually see molten, and you can see this is already set. I can already run my hands over it and instantly I've got that finish that quick. It is just astounding. Now, you can do this with anything. Now think about if you've got text and you want to overlay this onto text to do your own typography, your own sentiments, photographs. You want to actually burnish and finish off anything with an amazing effect, you can do it with these. And again, we've got them in an array of colors. So you could be doing this with the gold, you could go in with the reds and the silvers to pick out any accents. Now, with this, what I'm gonna do um, is I'm gonna start to apply all of my project together. Now, this one's really large, um, but of course I've done some that have been scaled down in different sizes. So I'm gonna work here to my station where I've collected quite a few of my flowers. I'm going to set this one to one side for the moment and show you uh, the ones that I've been working with. So this one here, I've already taken one out. So what I'm going to do is show you the best way to remove those. So I'm going to take, and you can see I printed all of this as it was. I didn't actually change the sizing. I'm using my uh, Craftmaster water brush. Now this is perfect um, for this process for the main reason being it doesn't flood the paper. So if I was to go straight into my water pot um, with my brush, every single time I wanted to take some water out of here, I'm gonna end up with drops all over it. Also, I can't control the amount of water that's gonna come out the tip of this brush. With this, adding the slightest amount of pressure, literally the same amount of pressure you would you probably use to hold it, it will decant the water continuously. And as you travel the brush over, you will get the, uh, you'll get the impression. And the best way to do it, the best way to sort of gauge how much you're going to be taking out of here. If you were to grab a piece of tissue, a piece of napkin at all, anything like that, you can practice. So if you were to take it straight onto the surface, you can see instantly a streamlined finish there is what we're after. If you're going around a circular element, you can gauge with the brush and you start to actually control the pressure. Again, it's not flooding the whole tissue. It's meaning I've just got little areas I can then tear away just like that, super, super simple, super easy, but so, so effective. So I'm gonna go into my um, actual design of rice paper here, and I'm going to work into this larger area first. Again, using that process we've just done with that piece of napkin, gonna go all the way around that edge, and you can go over it, because once the water is taken to that surface, you can see it's formed almost a halo, that's where the water will be channeled. Um, and that's all I've popped in that brush is water. You don't need any other solution at all. And you can see there, I'm just working into the rice paper and tearing it away, just like that. And if you've not put enough water on it, say if an area feels a little bit more robust, just go back over it slightly and then it will tear beautifully. Now, the reason for doing this is for one, it saves an awful lot of time and it makes the whole process far more enjoyable. But secondly, it gives it a feathered edge which is a desired finish with rice paper. And it, rice paper is a very interesting substrate. If I was to get this one, for example, okay, and without adding any water to it, if you were to tear it this way, fine, I've got a line here. If I was to try and tear it this way, I've automatically diverted off. You can see here, it's bowed out and it's torn this way. I'd find it much harder to control with natural tearing. If you use the water brush, it will allow you to carry that channel. It will follow the water line, um, giving you a much better result. So I'm gonna do the other one here. It's gonna take this away. There we are, going around here. Again, got my water pulled around that surface and then I'm just gently pulling it into itself. You can see I'm sort of working inwards with this design. There we go. Perfect. And if you've got any extra that you really just don't need, then you can work back into the design. Because you can see here, I've got quite an, an extra bit of paper there that's just not necessary. So we can work into that, tear it away, get as close as you want to to the design. And that way you're going to get the best finish. 
So here I have got, let's have a look how many. We might need, we'll probably tear the large one if we need it, but I've got one, two, three. Yeah, we've got enough there, that's good to go. Right, so I'm gonna have my glass mat for this process. And I want to show you the best way to apply these papers, especially once embossed. Now for this one, I actually, of course, went to the charity shops, surprise, surprise, um, raided and got this, and this was a pound, <laughs> this vase. Um, I bought probably about four or five of them all in different sizes. I've got another one here if we have time for me to do a little demo one as well. Um, but again, something that you may have lying around your house, it could be any sort of vase at all, doesn't necessarily have to look like this. What I am going to do though, to stop it rotating everywhere, I'm gonna see if it'll sit in this tape roll. There we go. In fact, have I got another one? I think this one might be better. Yeah, that'll do. So that'll just stop the vase um, completely rolling off the side. It'll not keep it super still, but it'll help. Um, and I'm gonna use a flat brush to apply my adhesive. Now I'm just literally using really inexpensive large flat brush for this. Um, you want it to be dry. Now, when you're applying your rice papers, a dry brush is really essential. And the reason for that is because if you're using a product, you don't want to counteract any of the properties that actually sit within this. Of course, it is a water-based product, but for the surface that we're applying it to, we want it to be waterproof. So adding any additional water to the solution can break down those properties because it's got the right balance in here. A bone dry brush is perfect. If you're finding that throughout the process you need to stop and break away and come back, um, give it a good wash and just let it dry first. I then just take any moisture off on the back of my hand or a bit of tissue um, and it's good to go. So what I'm going to do is as I'm applying this, start with the larger first, I'm going to decant the actual adhesive straight onto the rice paper. Sometimes I'll make a small blob and work from that um, on my glass mat, but for this process um, I'm working from the center and brushing outwards. Now, that's a really interesting point to make, the fact that I'm brushing outwards. The reason for that is the product is being dispersed out, but at the same time, the, the actual edges of the paper were ensuring that they are fully coated. Now, brushing inwards would have turned all of those edges up. So doing this is making sure it still stays really nice and flat, and we can still apply it where we want it to go. So that's gonna go down here at the base of this vase. So I'm just gonna bring it around so you can see it slightly easier. There we go. Now I'm gonna then use the brush with the product on um, from that application. I'm not gonna go back into the bottle and get any more out. Uh, for one, saves product, and secondly, it's just not essential. So then I'm going straight back over the, the actual vase itself with my brush. Now I spoke to you about um, ink bleeding from the paper, which is a really interesting point. When I actually applied the glue to the paper, I worked with it very quickly. So I didn't spend a lot of time putting my glue onto the paper. The longer the amount of time you spend with the um, adhesive on the reverse of the paper, the more chance you have of any of the ink starting to bleed from there. So going over super quick like this has eliminated that from happening. Now you might notice I keep sticking my finger onto the surface every now and again. If you get any wrinkles, you can smooth them down with a bit of glue on your finger you don't want to use a dry finger because then that way it's gonna to stick to your finger and you're gonna drag the surface. So pick up a little bit of glue and just glide it over the top. Make sure your fingers are clean as well, otherwise you'll put any muddy patches onto your paper, which is what you don't want. And you can see there it's just blended seamlessly. So I'm gonna work into my design. I'm gonna grab the second largest one now. Here we go. And what I love about this as well is that the process is completely controlled you have full control over this. And I always make sure as well that I just glue up one piece at a time. I wouldn't fill my whole glass mat with all of these little individual pieces glued all together because then you start to affect your drying times. And drying times working with glue and paint is really important to have a good balance with. So again, circular, going all the way around this piece here, brushing outwards with my adhesive. Then I think with this one, here we go. I'm going to take two, let's have a look. I think we should have it here towards the top. It would look quite nice. So again, I'm gonna take this one, use my brush strokes going down like this, and then stamp into the rice paper on a beveled area. When you've got areas of interest, ones that are raised, ones that have texture, I always sort of pounce a little bit with the brush just to embed it into the surface, and then slowly you can manipulate it and tell it where to go. You're in control of the paper and you have to stay in control of it. Otherwise, it will, it will be more inclined to do its own thing. 
So I'm working around with the design here, as you can see, going around the edges. And that has then actually adhered beautifully to the vase. So I'm gonna pick up another piece, but before, before I do that, I'm gonna grab a little water spray here, just onto my mat. Now, the reason why I'm doing this, I'm gonna get a cloth to wipe this up now, is that every time you add adhesive onto the surface, you're creating a sticky mat, almost like a scan and cut mat. It will become tacky. And if you lie, lie um, race, race paper, that, <laughs> I don't know what happened there. If you lie rice paper down onto that surface, even temporarily, it can adhere to it. So you almost act like you're doing double decoupage. So if I take any of that adhesive up now and keep on top of that as we work, we eliminate that from happening. So again, I kind of go straight back in with my rice paper designs and add some adhesive and continue to build that up. So I'm not worrying about the fact that my rice paper is now stuck to those previous sticky marks on my mat. There is ways you could eliminate that from happening by maybe working on a piece of paper um, and then chucking that away and doing it again. But again, that wastes a lot of paper um, and I, I, I that just doesn't work for me. I find this is the best way um, that you'll get the results. So again, working into those beveled areas, going around with the brush like that. And all of the glue will dry translucent. So you don't have to be cautious and worry about any of the adhesive um, leaving a mark on your design. It will dry fully translucent. I've got an area with no glue just in the center of there. So if I take some of the glue onto my brush, you can see I'm actually pressing the brush up against the pot this time. That reduces the flow of the amount of glue I'm actually decanting because I know I need a much smaller amount. And I've gone over this here. And let's bring that one to go around the top, or should I say the middle, just there. Now what I'm thinking with this one, it would look really nice almost with like a gold band um, going around the top of the vase. So I'm gonna show you another technique. So I'm just gonna leave this for a moment to dry. I'm not fully finished with it, but if we just leave it how it is, we can come back to that. I'm gonna just sit my brush in some water for now. And then again, spritz my mat down, pick up some of that adhesive, because we don't want it leaving a mess. There we go. Take any of that up and then we're still good to go. Now I'm gonna take a piece of blank rice paper from here and I'm not gonna do any printing on this one. So if I take this out, I'm gonna grab a roll of tape. Low tack washi tape is perfect for this. You don't want anything too tacky, otherwise it could actually tear your rice paper. Um, I'm gonna probably have a width of about that wide, I think. That should be adequate. There we go. So I've stuck it just down the edge. So you can see here, I've created a bit of a border with this. Make sure it's not creased. So I've created a border um, of about a centimetre thickness that runs down the side. Now what I'm going to do is, like I did with my um, paper earlier, I'm going to stencil spray this. So I'm going to hold it away from me. So I'm going to hold it up against the side. And what I'm going to do is spray my, my stencil spray over the top. So. Quick spray, just like that. I've gone over the entire edge of this paper and that's now tacky. So if I go back to my carrier sheet from earlier, what I'm gonna do with this is take my polished gold. Let's have a look whereabouts is, there we go, it's here. And I'm gonna go all over that rice paper border that we've just created there. So down the edge, all down one side and down this side too, there we go and then just tap that off gently. Perfect, and then all of this on here, I want this to go back inside the pot, of course. So I'm just gonna make a little pleat, a little fold in that card, and then again, put all of this back inside the pot. Oh, that was close, thought I'd lost some then. There we go. I always tend to do this process on another piece of paper, so I can always pick up some excess, but today I'd be lucky, there we go. I'm gonna take that away and then what we can do is remove the tape from the rice paper now. So if I take this away, it leaves us with that beautiful border behind. You can see there we're left with that edge and if I take my heat gun to this, it will do that beautiful process all over it. So I'm gonna take my heat gun and heat it up. There we go. And then straight over the top with this, working from the edge first. You can see here, as I work down this rice paper, it happens instantly. 
So you can see the shine there already. So I'll just bring that up. You can see how the shine just instantly takes shape. Just like that. There we go. All over the surface. And it's that quick. It is that quick to do. So if I show you there, you can see, as I move that with my hands, how shiny and beautiful that is. It just looks exquisite. Now you could do, if you wanted to, you could do stripes going down here. You could do um, a multitude of effects and patterns with a stencil. If you wanted to stencil spray through a stencil and not only stencil spray the stencil, you could do that too. Um, you could create some stunning finishes and also you can still stamp and emboss onto rice paper too. So what I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna take um, a metal ruler and my craft knife here. And I'm just going to cut this away from the edge, okay? So working down here, and of course, always be very cautious when you do this process. There we go, perfect. So I've taken that away. And then I'm going to go back into our napkin glue. And I need a much smaller brush for this. And because I'm in a, um, a very streamlined border, I'm going to dip into the pot. But what I don't want to do is dip back in. So I've taken a little bit out. There we go. And on the reverse of that, I'm then going to add the glue going all the way down the edge like this. It doesn't matter if you do get any on the other side, you can wipe it off. It, Of course, embossing powder technically is plastic, um, so it's a wipeable surface. So I'm going all over the reverse of this strip here. Wonderful. And then if I bring that vase back in, lay it back down on that roll of tape here to keep it steady. We pick this up, we can create a beautiful border to go around the top. So I'm just going to wrap that around. Here we go. And then bring it and meet it back around on this side and it is just the right size. There we go. In fact, I'm gonna show you the other side. It's probably around about five millimeters too short, but it really does not matter because it's the back of the vase. There we go. And then what I'm gonna do with the leftover glue is go around the top of this just to put a real impression into the top of here. There we go. Just like that. And going around the entire of that vase with my brush. Beautiful, absolutely exquisite. You can see here, it's almost like we've used liquid gold to line the top of this. Whilst I've got my glue out, um, I'm gonna add another one of those little embellishments, I think, round probably one up here, maybe I think one would look nice. So I'm just gonna take some of that glue onto the reverse of this piece. There we are, working all over that edge. Again, I'm being quite quick with my adhesive time, so I'm not leaving too much time for the glue to rest onto the surface, because the second it touches that rice paper, it absorbs straight into it. Um, and that's all you need to do. That's the only time it needs. It doesn't need any longer than that. Straight back into the design and start to smooth that down beautifully. There we go. So we can see there, that just looks absolutely gorgeous. I just love how that turns out. And you don't, you don't even see the edge at all with it. So because I've painted this vase white um, with my hybrid acrylic um, from Cadence, again, I've got that beautiful flush background. I'm gonna actually grab a little bit more adhesive and just do this one whilst I've got my glue out. So lid back on and I'm gonna do cancel them out into the center of that design. And I'm working with a slightly smaller brush, which is fine. Still got some decent coverage with it, but work what's best for you, what you find most suitable. So let's go all over that. There we are then around those edges again, pick up the design and then let's take it to, let it go there I think. I'm gonna pop it there. So again, with the product that's left over on the brush, I'm going right over that design flush with those edges and then you'll see all of the little feathered areas just disappear like so there we are so that there is how we can create a beautiful finish on glassware because this is a glass vase um, with our embossing technique and rice paper so if i just hold that up to show you um, you can see there it just looks exquisite it really does and it's one of those finishes that once you've started working with it it's one of those that becomes quite addictive. So absolutely beautiful, beautiful design um, all the way around the edge there um, with that. And look how the light just shines off all of those gold embossed areas, especially towards the top of it. 
Now this is still wet at the moment, it's still got a tack to it, so as it dries that glue will dry translucent and fully clear, but in the meantime I would leave it at room temperature to dry, especially that top bit, I just think it looks fabulous. Leave it to dry at room temperature, so let's just decorate our um, background with it and we'll sit it just here whilst that dries, there we go. Um, and we're going to move on to the next step, okay, okay. and I'm going to do another project for you, um, and I'm not going to go into the printer for this one, I've printed it out because obviously I didn't want to do that every time because then um, I want to do some more crafting with you. So let's um, just quickly clean up our desk, again a quick mist of water with some of that cloth, um, which I always prefer to do, it's far more sustainable, but at the same time it gets all of that glue off there and water on its own without any soap is adequate to get that done. Um, of course if, you've, if it started to dry um, you're going to want to use some hot water and some soap before it's fully set because it is designed to be permanent. So with for this one I've got some designs here that I've um, already pre-cut and I've got this chocolate box actually um, which was left on my desk and I still don't know who left it there, but I've decided to use it and it had no chocolates in it. So you can see here, I've left that little bit unpainted so you could just see with the Cadence paint how fabulous the coverage is. And I'm probably going to leave that uncovered and if we get time to paint it, I will do. That just shows you that you can use something that's ready for the bin and make it something beautiful. So what I did is I drew around with one of my rice papers from the Char Charming Shim Shimwazari USB and I actually cut it to size. Um, so I could see it would go over the lid perfectly. But I wasn't quite content with that, I wanted to take it to that next level. So I actually then cut from cardstock um, a slightly smaller version of it so it would create a border. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm actually going to stencil spray the piece of card. So if I take my stencil spray and I'm just going to spray it onto that piece of card here. So this side is now tacky. I'm going to put it down over the top of this. Let me just take that here, make sure I try and get my borders equal. So I may block it for a second with my head. There we go, sorry about that. But I'm just going to line it up and then I'll be out of your way. There we go. So I've lined that up on here, so that's now stuck to those surfaces. Now what I'm going to do is I'm always making sure as well not to spray the stencil spray directly onto my desk because any overspray is just going to go here and with then everything's going to glue to our surface. So I'm going to move this around again to the side and spray just going around the edges. So I'm literally going to just focus on this border. So intermediate sprays intermittently around the edge, just like that is absolutely fine. Don't even know where I started. I think it was there. There we go. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to put my embossing powder on here whilst the card is still on there because I don't want any spray to go over the edge. So I'm going to use my polish gold for this one and again go around on the border of that rice paper just going around this edge here, there we go, focusing on all of that side. <coughs> Sorry to excuse me. And then what I'm going to do is tap any of those bits off and continue to work around the edge like this. There we go. Again, tap a little bit more of that off. And then we've got just over halfway with that design. So I'm going to tap all of that off, put it back inside the pot. Here we go. And then just start that process again, but with the remaining areas that I've not yet covered. So go around, just going to quickly decrease that one. Again, around all of this area here. And if any embossing powder is stuck to an area that you don't want it to be, you can just go over with a paintbrush and flick that off before it is set because again we are using a temporary adhesive. So all of that can now go back in here. There we go. Do excuse me, I'm just going to have a quick drink for just a second just to quickly clear my throat. I usually have a cup of tea on the go. Um, not today though, I don't know what's going on but didn't even think about a cup of tea this morning. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take um, that mask that we created away from this, like that, which has given us that beautifully decorated border. Now if I go in with our heat gun and focus on that edge again, that we've just used with that embossing, what it's going to do is add a beautiful gold shimmer all the way around that edge. 
Here we go. So I'm following that round with the heat gun and just chasing it as I work with it here. There we go. And I'm rotating the paper round and trying to keep my gun in, in the same place. So I'm not actually uh, maneuvering too, too much. There we go. Bring that round here. Take that round. And then you take the other, other side. There we go. I think I missed a tiny, teeny patch with my embossing powder just there and there, but that's okay. We can touch that up afterwards with our um, glue. So you can see there now, that has now foiled our rice paper all the way around the edge. So you can still take a cut design like this and still actually decorate it with a neat, precise finish. So we didn't use the brush stroke for that one. So it's two different ways of doing it. Then what I'm gonna do is take the lid of our box. So our lid here, that will then sit beautifully on the top of this. So firstly, I'm gonna take my napkin glue I've got a new uh, dry brush for this. I'm gonna put the napkin glue actually on the surface first this time. Now you can of course apply it directly to the paper like we did last time, but I'm gonna apply it over to the surface because I've got a much larger surface area to cover. And the reason why I do this is for one, it makes it much easier to handle the rice paper. So again, if you're covering the front of a drawer or you're doing a piece of furniture, um, you can always decorate the actual piece itself with the glue before you apply the paper. It's easier to manage. Um, secondly as well, by the time you've finished applying glue to this whole piece and you started here, by the time you get to here, this part, it could be starting to stick to the mat. So you eliminate any of that from happening. So all the way around this edge, and then I'm gonna take my design and match up those scalloped edges and sit it directly on top. There we go. And because this is a napkin glue, it's designed to be slightly more fluid-like um, than any of the others. So automatically, it's gonna soak straight through. So we're gonna go straight over the top of our design here, like this. I'm gonna pick up a little bit more adhesive. I'm gonna pop it on my glass mat, just a small bead of it there. And then any areas that I've missed, I'm just gonna go directly over the top of it with my glue now, sealing down all of those edges, which is just therapeutic to do. Um, but at the same time looks absolutely gorgeous. So again, any areas that you've got that have curled up a little bit, put a little bit of glue on both sides and there you can match it up with the, with the edges. And this would look great on like coasters um, or just even small decorative items in your home it would look really, really nice. So then I'm gonna go all the way around that edge, just following the design. There we go, so you can see here how beautiful that is and it's matched up and then the gold just shines off the top of here and it's not too in your face as well and well something that's really interesting what you can do is you could when we sprayed it and put the embossing powder on it and then we heat it you could then spray it again and do it again and that would give you and build up more of the intensity of the gold but I like the, uh, the almost frosting that we've got here and then I've got a, um, a molding here that I've painted black I've had this one for a little while um, but what I'm going to do with this one, I'm just going to set my brush um, in some water to keep it um, moist. There we go. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take um, my clear ink for this one. So again, if you've got a, a clear ink at home, I'm going to go over all of the top um, of my embellishment here. This could be buttons, it could be an old key, um, it could be absolutely anything. And I'm literally going over all of the top of it there. There we go. And then I'm going to grab that paper again like that and I'm going to take my embossing powder and go all over the top of this wooden embellishment now. There we go. Just like that. So I'm decorating my embossing powders again onto a different surface, not only rice paper. It's so, so, so multifunctional. And look at that, it's frosted all of that area beautifully. Um, so I'm going to take my heat gun to it. Before again we do that, I'm going to pop some back inside the pot. There we go. Wonderful. Put the lid on before we take any heat anywhere and then we can bring our heat gun out. Now I need to let this really get to its prime temperature. It takes just a couple of seconds though. And then straight to the MDF surface. 
Now what this is going to do is give me almost like a gilded effect. So I'm going all the way around, just onto here. There we go. And this is just immaculate. I absolutely love doing this. All over onto that surface area. And it's captured all of the area where the ink pad was. So when I show you this in a second, you're going to absolutely love it. Making sure every single bit is melted. And then I always do a little recap and go over it. So you can see here, look at that. That there is polished gold on the surface of this embellishment. I just, I'm in love with that. And I just think it's fabulous. So what we're going to do is take this to the lid that we've just made. Um, and I'm going to take some adhesive. Now, which one shall I use? I think I'm going to use a little bit of my book binding glue for this because that'll be perfect. Onto the reverse of my molding that I've got here. There we go. So I'm just going to pop this on the back of this design. There we are. And we have got some fabulous moldings as well on the website at the moment, um, so do check those out. So what I'm going to do then is sit this directly on the top of the box like that. There we go. And that shouldn't take long to dry. I'm going to press in from both sides because, again, this is just a cardboard box. Um, so we really are transforming this into something exquisite. So that's going to go on here. And then for the edges, I think these need something on there too. I've actually got some strips here. So what I'm going to do is grab my brush again one more time, put some of that napkin glue directly onto the reverse of that paper. So I'm working from my mat for this one because again we're using a long strip and it'll be much easier for us to control it. So I'm going to go right around those edges. There we go. Like that. Giving it full, full coverage. And then I'm going to go straight to the edge of our lid here and take that strip. And what I did is this, I think was about an inch and a quarter um, thick, this lid. So then I just cut with my scalpel, like I did moments ago, um, an inch and a quarter strips um, to create this beautiful border. So then whilst that's actually adhered to the surface, let me just bring that one down just a little bit. There we go. I'm then gonna take my brush and then just go all over those edges here like that and fasten, should I say fasten really, adhere and weld with my glue all of that rice paper into the edges. So I'm just going to do the exact same process for this strip. Just going to quickly make sure that's definitely uh, covered in there. Fabulous. And what I love as well is it's so forgiving. Rice paper is a very, very forgiving substrate to work with. Um, and if you bought the USB and you've been printing it on paper craft and you're still um, a bit hesitant on the rice paper, um, I would definitely suggest going for it because, for one, it's a leap that you can take without having to spend a lot to do it. Um, and secondly, it's one that once you start using it, um, you'll never look back. Depending on what surfaces you want to work on, too, there's always something new to explore. So I'm just going to do the rest of this trim around here. There we go work into all of those little areas. There we are. And then take my glue again. And before I push anywhere else, I'm going into those little indentations to make sure it's captured. Sorry, do excuse me. I'm gonna do a little cough. <coughs> I do apologize about that. So then I'm just going to quickly go all the way around that side. And then I've got a little gap here I just need to fill. So if I see here, with this strip, I cut an extra one just in case. I'm just going to trim that down. Take a little bit more of my glue out from my bottle here. Straight onto the back of that rice paper again. And hopefully I've cut this long enough. That'll be, uh, that's usually the thing I do. We were putting new skirting boards on all over our house and it would be ever so slightly too big by literally about a centimetre. So I'd go take the tiniest minute bit off and then it'd be like way too short. <laughs> and I was like, how does that even happen? But today I've managed to do it so it was just the right size, perfect. There we go. 
So you can see the lid of our box there is beautifully decorated with our embellishment using our melted highlights. Again, with the melted highlights around this side, so it complements that beautiful shine together as well with the rice paper design. It would then have the base of this box here. Um, now, I don't have my white paint with me, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you again, that would then sit onto the base of here, but I'm going to stick that on at a later date um, and then I can finish that little bit of paint off. I did think I had um, a little pot of white paint, but unfortunately I don't. I could, I wonder if I could steal one of Stephanie's. Oh, she's got them with her. It's fine. What we're going to do is I'm going to go straight onto the lid of this here and that there is beautifully finished. You can see here again, we've gone from a really plain uh, chocolate box to something that's got a great amount of detail and work into it, um, showing you how you can utilize those beautiful papers with the techniques to be built together. It's one of those um, that's satisfying to work with, but it's so, so um, satisfying when you see the finished result. And you can see our vase here is almost dry as well. Um, and the two of those that we worked together in um, building these beautiful projects. So the two of those together, um, but then of course there's so, there's so, so much more you can do. What I'm just gonna quickly show you is those melting highlights um, onto a little bit of rice paper, um, just to show you one of the different colors. So I've got here, let's have a look, one of our peacocks. So the design from the Shinwazari USB, um, we've got this peacock design. And I'm just going to, I wanted to pick out some of the accents in here to show that even on the smaller designs, you can still focus on that area. So I'm just going to quickly dry my brush off, which won't take me a moment. And you can see here when looking at the design, when we've got this um, variety to work with, we've got all of these different sizes here. So this smaller area here, I could be thinking, well, this one I could fill completely with embossing powder, or I could work with the feathers or just pick out any accent. So let's use, I think the silver would work really well with this one. So I've still got some napkin glue still inside my pot here. Um, so I'm gonna to start to work into, there we go, just mix it back up to reactivate it. I'm gonna work into the feathers. So I'm gonna do brush strokes going down and I'm gonna do alternate ones on here. And again, with a brush stroke, it will look like a feather, which is fabulous. So polished silver directly over the top again. Then you want to take that off onto your carrier sheet. So let's bring that back into the picture here. There we go. And then those beautiful little um, feathers as we go down. I think peacocks just look spectacular. I'm gonna go into all of these ones here. There we go. Then just do little scallops with my brush all down here. And I'm working quite quickly with this because um, I don't want it to dry before I've added my adhesive, but at the same time to save us constantly going back to the pot um, and back into the glue. I'm going to try and do it all in one go. So working down onto that paper, again, picking out the accents you want to cover. There we are. It's going to do these last three, and then we should be good to go with our embossing powder. So you don't need a lot at all as well. I'm only applying a very small, thin coverage. So our silver here, all over the top, and then Let's go right down onto here. And this is something I've never ever done before with rice paper. It's completely new. Um, <clears throat> I'm just gonna grab my heat gun and show you the finished effect. So again, straight onto the surface. There we go. And it's just starting to instantly turn it into that foiled effect. Just looks fabulous. There we go. So if I just show you this here, look at that. It's just picked out all of that detail beautifully. And again, it's a process that you can repeat in so many different ways in so with so many different effects. But again, seeing the difference between the two, like on the vase um, or on that box um, of how you can use these. Now, in this workshop, I wanted to try and cover those um, finishes and those effects to try and give you some um, results that are gonna be incredible, that they're gonna look um, with great impact. And as well, when you're working with this USB, you'll find that you can follow this technique through onto so many more in the future. And when we've got so many different designs coming out, um, it's not just tailored to this design. 
Um, but I hope you really have enjoyed um, the Zoom workshop today. Um, there's still loads more that we can discover with the rice paper, but I hope I've covered a lot of questions and answered a lot of thoughts um, about especially the printing. Um, this is this is one of those workshops really where I can cover so much detail in here for you. Um, but thank you so much for joining. Um, I really I really thoroughly enjoyed it as well. And you can go back and watch this um, on YouTube where it'll be uploaded for you. You'll get the link for it. Um, and then of course you can watch it back at any point. Um, either Crate and Craft or Highlight Crafts will email you. Um, depending on where you bought it from, whether you bought it from Crate and Craft or Highlight Crafts, you will get receive that link within an email and you can go back and watch it at any time you want to to take tips from it or of course sit back and enjoy it. Or of course, um, if you had to go somewhere halfway through, you can come back and watch it. Um, but I really do hope you've enjoyed it and I can't wait to join you for the next one. So do take care and have a wonderful day. Bye. If you want to see more from Highlight Crafts, make sure you click the like button. Subscribe by clicking the subscribe button below and click the bell icon to receive notifications of all of our future content. You can also click here to see our latest video or click here to see more videos like this one.